One of the main superstars in the world of martial arts and cinema, Bruce Lee, was gone on July 20, 1973. Circumstances around his death were a mystery for a long time. However, they were still uncovered. Welcome to Infinity. In this episode, I'll tell you what Jean-Claude Van Damme and other people think about the death of Bruce Lee. I'll also share other mysteries that were solved and disclosed. On May 10, 1973, Bruce Lee fainted while he was reading out the film Enter the Dragon. The actor was urgently hospitalized with epilepsy and headache, he was diagnosed with cerebral edema, and he was prescribed a medicine to reduce the amount of liquid in his head. The actor seemed to be recovering gradually, and he was discharged from the hospital. However, two months later, he suddenly died. As the autopsy showed, this happened as a result of cerebral edema. Whereas the reasons are still not fully known. The reason for edema is not specified, even in the report of the anatomic pathologist. According to the main version, cerebral edema was provoked by aquagesic, the medicine that contains aspirin and mepromabate. The actor took it to control pain. In fact, this is just a supposition. Bruce wasn't analyzed after death. That's why many people doubt that he could have died from an ordinary pill. Firstly, he'd taken this medicine before and everything was normal. Secondly, his fans considered that such a robust and powerful fighter that turned his body into a weapon and that was in such good shape couldn't have died from a pill. Chuck Norris, a friend and training partner of Bruce Lee, told us many years later that it's the interaction of drug substances that the actor took in the hospital that could have become the reason for his death. Another theory says that cerebral edema was caused by a heat stroke. The actor was working on Game of Death shortly before his death, and he was acting in a heavy sports suit under the scorching sun. There's also a different theory. The actor had consumed too little hard food in the last months before his death. He abused alcohol, and he was always thirsty. At some point, his kidneys stopped removing enough water from his body, which led to cerebral edema. There's also a more exotic version. Allegedly, it's the triads and Chinese mafia that could have poisoned Bruce Lee. Jean-Claude Van Damme, who was greatly influenced by Bruce Lee, considered that it was quite possible. Some fans of the Master of Martial Arts are also of the same opinion. Bruce Lee is known to have been the leader of the Tigers of Junction Street. One day, he defeated the son of the triad's boss in Hong Kong. After that, Bruce Lee's father urgently sent his son to the States, as far as farther from the mafiosa. According to this version, triads did not forgive him for this juvenile trick and they simply took revenge on him years later. Some people look at it from another angle. According to them, though Bruce Lee left the criminal, he still remained connected with triads while he was in the films. Bosses required that he pay a penalty as well as other Asian stars. However, Bruce Lee flatly refused to pay tribute to triads, therefore he was poisoned. It's possible that everything was different, but still with the participation of triads. As one of the versions says, the actor could have developed cerebral edema after an injury on the film set when he took a blow in his head from another actor. According to this theory, the actor had nothing to do with the crowd scene. He was a killer in a triad that mastered a pinpoint blow that strikes nervous centers and can cause postponed death. This sounds absolutely insane and unrealistic. However, supporters of this theory have another proof that Bruce Lee could have been killed by the mafiosi. This is his son, Brandon. As well as his father, Brandon was gone early at the age of 28 years. This is no eventuality. He died in the film set of The Crow. According to the plot, his character was shot. In the course of filming, no one of the crew noticed a plug that stuck out of the barrel in the gun. While shooting a blank round, it flew out of the gun and hit Brandon's stomach. As a result, he died unexpectedly. It's considered that Brandon was related to the criminal world as well as his father. At the same time, he was thinking of leaving it, whereas the Mafia did not forgive the backslider. At the end of the day, it indicatively got rid of him. These are just theories. It's more like conspiracy theories, though many close associates of Bruce Lee and celebrities believe in them. They've not been confirmed. Possibly this will happen soon. If so, I suggest that we talk about other conspiracy theories and mysteries that have been disclosed and confirmed. It's the American CIA that participates in many conspiracy theories. The MK Ultra program is the evidence of this. 
From the middle of the last century, conspiracists stated that the American government had experimented on people and carried out creepy tests on them. However, this just caused distrust and made people laugh. This is the case when conspiracy theorists were right. The MK Ultra program that was initially clandestine was uncovered and disclosed. The MK Ultra was a program aimed to manipulate the conscience with all that it implies. Officers of the CIA recruited participants for the experiment. They often did that violently without the consent of probationers, whereas secret experiments were conducted unknown to people. Participants of the experiments were injected with different chemical substances and hallucinogens. They applied the electroconvulsive shock therapy to them. They made them fall into a coma. They made them listen to sounds and commands that were recorded on tape and so on. They tried to turn some probationers into a kind of cyborgs, ideal soldiers that didn't feel the pain or super spies. They wanted to endow others with a special force and even new abilities. They tried to completely extinguish all their memories and change their personalities and so on. Experiments were carried out on people from universities, research centers, hospitals, and prisons. Interestingly, this was performed not only in the USA but also in other countries. When the truth was uncovered, it's only two deaths and one hospitalization from these experiments that were confirmed. These are only official data. To be exact, the information that was officially preserved. In 1973, when the Congress launched an investigation, the CIA deliberately destroyed key files of the MK Ultra program, and it's more likely that the most important information was exactly there. Possibly there were not tens of probationers, as stated, but tens of thousands. The CIA allocated no less than 6% of the overall budget for this program. This is a considerable sum of money. So the scale of the project could have been colossal. Who knows what the experiments of the CIA led to? Maybe there are still people with telekinesis, like Eleven from Stranger Things. After all, what the laboratory in the series shows is most closely approximate to things that probationers of the MK Ultra experienced. Fans of a conspiracy theory concerning the secret government ruling the world are in the know about this place. The Bohemian Rhapsody is a picturesque place in California that's part of the Bohemian Club. Initially, the club served as a meeting place for journalists, painters, and musicians. Afterwards, the Bohemian Club extended to businessmen, bankers, entrepreneurs, and even representatives of the government as permanent members. When it became known, people came up with a conspiracy theory that they gathered in the Bohemian Rhapsody not only to have a rest but to discuss extremely important political and commercial transactions. For example, we know that it's exactly where they discussed the Manhattan Project in 1942 that led to the creation of the nuclear bomb. In the course of time, an even more dreadful conspiracy theory came into being. According to it, they did not only discuss ideas and plans in the Rhapsody that would influence the whole world as a result, but they also conducted sinister rites associated with Satanism. It's been just a theory for a long time, and very few people believed in it. At the same time, there were no proofs. After all, it was almost impossible to get to this Rhapsody for an ordinary person. It's thoroughly guarded, and all the guests are carefully checked. However, in 2004, one person managed to penetrate there during a meeting and he came across an owl statue that symbolized Illuminati. People in hoodies stood around it, and a huge fire performing a sinister rite. Other eyewitnesses stated that the rituals with sacrifices were carried out in the Rhapsody. Not too long ago, the boxer Rayan Garcia said that he had been in the Bohemian Rhapsody in his childhood. According to him, they tied him, and they made him look at what adults were doing such creepy things. Despite many took it for a joke of the boxer, there are many other proofs telling us about the fact that something really dreadful is happening there. Cancer No one wants to come down with this terrible disease. Everybody knows that it's difficult, painful, and expensive to cure cancer. In some cases, it's even impossible. All of us know what may cause it. For example, you can develop lung cancer as a result of smoking. This is what doctors warn us about. And there are even illustrative pictures on cigarette boxes. For now, it's not a secret. However, it's conspiracy theorists who told us about this. Yes, it used to be considered an invention and a conspiracy theory that smoking is fraught with cancer. It was officially negated that smoking is unhealthy. 
It's even cigarette producers who made an oath that their product was not harmful to our health. What's more, it's the opposite. Cigarette producers claim that smoking was a medicine against some diseases, from flu and fever to asthma and breath shortness. It's ironic, isn't it? The tobacco industry was promoted everywhere. There were smoking characters in all the possible spheres, including cartoons. Doctors gave their accolades to cigarettes, saying that they're very useful. Apart from that, cigarettes were considered so innocuous that they were recommended to women and even children. Everything started to change in the 20th century when suddenly the number of patients with lung cancer increased. At first, doctors and scientists thought that the reason consisted in a growing number of cars and an increase in exhaust fumes. That's quite logical. Others considered that this situation was caused by smoke from multiplying factories. It's the most insightful people who deduced the conspiracy theory that tobacco producers were lying. All of this was caused by cigarettes that were not healthy at all. On the contrary, they were very harmful and even deadly. At first, this caused the same reaction as many other conspiracy theories, distrust and irresponsibility. At the same time, tobacco companies knew how harmful their product was. However, to provide a growing demand for their production, they decided to fight against anti-tobacco supporters and they refused to seed. On top of that, it's Hollywood that played the biggest role. They started to smoke in films more frequently, with the most popular celebrities doing this. Such an act influences masses, and it made them think that smoking is not harmful. It's surprising, but the truth was revealed relatively recently, just in the 1990s. The conspiracy theory of the biggest tobacco corporation was uncovered whereas the Philip Morris company officially admitted that smoking is unhealthy. From that moment on, the public view of the society on smoking changed, and many people decided to give up this habit. They also say that conspiracists are paranoids and schizoids. As you can see, they can have a positive influence on the whole world. Truth be told, we haven't managed to eradicate this problem completely yet. There are still a lot of smokers in the world. It's even despite the fact that it's becoming increasingly fashionable to give up smoking. Another addiction is alcohol. In the past, they tried to fight against it with the use of radical methods. For example, they introduced the so-called prohibition. The most famous case of it is a ban on the sale and production of alcohol in the USA in the 1920s. Though this partially helped, people didn't stop drinking completely. At a proper time, bootlegging was in its prime. It's the clandestine production and sale of alcohol. The government understood that people just continued drinking. We couldn't do anything against it, could we? At the time of prohibition in the USA, they started to notice that it's more and more people than usual that started to get intoxicated. Hence, a conspiracy theory came into being that it's not bootleggers that allegedly sold alcohol of low quality, the government of the USA. Surprisingly, this theory was confirmed rather quickly. The government understood that the prohibition was just a restrictive measure and that people would find a way to get alcohol if they want. Then, radical measures were introduced. By the request of the government of the USA, producers of technical alcohol had to increase the content of methanol and other poisonous things in it. Sometimes it's even petrol and mercury that were added to alcohol. Bootleggers were quick to understand what the government was thinking of, and they found the best specialists in chemistry so that they would purify and distill alcohol with maximum quality. As a result, all this turned into a war. The authorities contaminated technical alcohol more and more, whereas bootleggers used different methods to purify it and sell it. It was proposed that the population would be feared to drink even clandestine alcohol, but this was not the case. All this led to a sharp increase in mortality and scandals. Thousands of people died because of prohibition. As a result, the government decided to retreat. Prohibition was canceled in 1933. One of the results of the prohibition in the USA was the extension of the mafia influence. It's exactly bootlegging that considerably increased their influence in society. After all, it's exactly the mafia that was engaged in the illegal alcohol trade. In some places, everything was solved by bribery, whereas in others, it's the mafia itself that commanded the illicit trafficking of alcohol. However, the very phenomenon of the Mafia was considered something mystic. There were rumors among people that a secret organization appeared in the influential circles of the USA that regulates criminality and is engaged in illegal activity. However, many people did not believe in it 
and they didn't take it seriously for decades. That's why the mafia in the USA was a full-blown conspiracy theory. The truth became known just in 1963 due to the mafiosi Joe Valacci, who ended up behind bars. He was the first in history who publicly declared that the mafia existed, and he also provided the permanent subcommission of the American Senate for investigation with detailed information about the inner structure of the mafia and its mysteries. It's exactly him that introduced the concept of Casa Nostra. This is how the Sicilian Mafia is called now. Though the leaders of the Mafia were not apprehended after Joe Valacci had recognized that, his testimony confirmed the old theory about the conspiracy, and it became the first source of precious data from the history of the Mafia, its activity, and rights accepted in this secret community. It's impossible to imagine conspiracy theories without UFOs and aliens. But it's not about the fact that alien flying saucers are real and that green humanoids regularly visit our planet, though we can discuss it. Since cases with UFOs started to happen more frequently, a theory of conspiracy came into being in society that the government of the USA did not turn a blind eye to them, but on the contrary, they studied and researched them. Conspiracy theorists considered that all the proclamations of the authorities, that instead of something interesting, it's an ordinary meteorological probe or a meteor that twinkled in the sky, were not real. Though many people recommended to such conspiracists that they put on caps made from foil and that they should not fool around, they were right. In the 21st century, a secret American program became known that pursued the goal of collecting and analyzing abnormal cosmic threats starting from modern spaceships to possible encounters with aliens. What's more, several years later, the government openly declared that they had already been keeping track of UFOs and that the Pentagon even published several exclusive videos with strange objects on them. Here we have to make clear that UFOs do not have to be associated with aliens. This way, you can call absolutely anything in the sky that they did not manage to recognize and identify. Conditionally, even if a quadcopter of a fan or air filming flashed in the sky, and if they couldn't make it out, it would be considered a UFO. So you shouldn't build excessive hopes. At the same time, a more mystical conspiracy theory is becoming confirmed that does not say about the fact that the government of the USA does not only study the UFOs, but also aliens, and that they have aliens at their disposal. Last year, the former official of the CIA, David Grush, admitted under oath that the government of the USA downed any UFOs as quickly as possible to use shatters to create new kinds of weapons. All the removals of such UFOs are instantly classified. According to him, the Pentagon does not only have alien machineries, but all the remnants of aliens. Though it was admitted, it's not enough to fully confirm the conspiracy theory about aliens. After all, you've understood that even the most insane theories can be uncovered as a result. They didn't used to believe in the Mafia, and they didn't think that it's smoking that causes cancer. So possibly, several years later, it'll be weird not to believe in aliens. Now I'll tell you about conspiracy theories concerning UFOs and the moon. It was a chilly morning when journalist Joseph Wilson arrived at the Space Center to interview the famous astronaut Daniel Ryan. Daniel was known for his long flights and impressive experience in space. However, the name Daniel Ryan is not his real name. It's a nickname which the astronaut chose to hide his name for privacy. Joseph and Daniel sat down in an interview room surrounded by high walls to ensure complete privacy. As the cameras began recording, Joseph began the standard questioning procedure. But Daniel was more nervous than usual. After a few simple questions about his career and accomplishments, Wilson decided to ask a question that would baffle Daniel. Ryan, how do you feel knowing that your space expedition to the moon was a fake? Daniel stood still for a minute, his eyes filled with sadness and disappointed. Joseph, I can't hide this truth any longer. No American astronaut has ever visited the moon. The journalist was stunned. What do you mean? After all, millions of people believe in the exploits of the American astronauts. The man sighed and began to tell the story he'd kept secret all these years. The United States government knows that the moon is empty, and all our Apollo missions were only invented to shift the vector of attention in the direction the authorities wanted. The journalist looked at the astronaut opposite him in bewilderment. 
What mystery are you talking about? What do you mean the moon is empty? The moon is actually a large scientific facility created by an ancient civilization to study Earth and its inhabitants, Daniel replied. It's a station that's been in operation for thousands of years and has no intention of stopping doing so. The government's guarding this truth, not because it wants to remain powerful in the eyes of the inhabitants, but because it doesn't know what secrets are really hidden there and are afraid of bringing everything to cataclysm and destruction. At this point, the interview ended, and both men fled in an unknown direction with frightened and worried faces. Be sure to watch this video to the end, because I'll tell you theories about the hollow moon, aliens watching us, and much more. Life in a Hologram The universe is a boundless space with an abundance of mysteries and riddles. In our quest to understanding its essence, we question even what we have only recently considered the only possible truth. And one such example is the theory of life in a hologram. According to it, our perception of reality is deceptive. We may be living in a hologram where everything we observe is just a projection of our consciousness. Like a profound art that creates the illusion of objective reality, the hologram of the universe captivates our imagination. All matter contained in some region of space can be represented as a hologram and the very principle of this view of the world originated from a discussion of black hole thermodynamics. Allegedly, all information that falls into them does not disappear anywhere but is duplicated on the event horizon. When something falls into a black hole, it stays there forever and is distorted beyond recognition. As a result, all information is stored in an unreadable form. The statement is based on fundamental physical principle. Then scientists went further. They suggested that in general, any information in any amount can be written on the surface limiting this amount. If we talk about the information from the black box, it's written on the walls of the black box. If the information is about the solar system, it can be written on the imaginary sphere around it, and the data about everything that happens in the universe is written on its boundary. Thus, in general, everything you and I see is either reality or someone else's hologram, a projection made, for example, to observe us. We do not have enough scientific knowledge to determine exactly what's behind this illusion. Maybe our creators are behind it, manifesting as intelligence timeless consciousness or advanced civilizations from other dimensions. Perhaps you and I are an experiment being investigated by other forms of intelligence for obtaining knowledge and experience. Yet while this theory is mysterious and appealing, we must remember that it remains an assumption for now. Perhaps in time we can find further evidence or disproof of this theory to clarify the true nature of our universe. In the meantime, we can only dream of what lies behind the darkness of the hologram and try to solve the great mystery of the universe. The whole world is an ordinary flowing liquid. I agree, it sounds ambiguous. To put it mildly, there are a lot of questions, disputes and misunderstandings. How is it possible? But I'll tell you that even if space has only three dimensions, there is still a fourth one in the form of time. That is why, theoretically, it's possible to visualize the universe that exists in four-dimensional space-time. And time here is not something as strange and uncontrollable as you and I are used to seeing it, but something like an ocean, a river, or a body of water. Just as water is made up of countless molecules, according to the theory, space-time is made up of microscopic particles at a deeper level of reality. So. Time is essentially a fluid that flows in a specific direction and cannot be controlled by humans. But what if it actually can be controlled? This is the question that scientists from all over the world ask themselves when research into this question reached an ambiguous point. Some went on to think that it's all nonsense and humans will never achieve it, even if it's true. And others said that we have something to strive for. And if we finally reach the final, we'll be able to turn back time, create a time machine, and generally control our lives fully. You know what confuses me about such a theory? Like the one that called time and the whole world a liquid? Every time I hear something like that, it seems to me that if it's true and we humans have already reached this point, then aliens have studied it, have access to everything, and are light years ahead of us. But if that's really the case, why are they contacting us? 
what you're about to hear next may change your view of reality. For decades, scientists from around the world have been studying the phenomenon of pulsars, their signals from space directed to us. Every time people receive them, they hope that it's a message from aliens that will finally change the world and make it much better. But nothing unusual happens. And then the question arises. Either nobody has really made contact with us yet, or all these rays and pulsars are one continuous message from an advanced civilization. Yes, some scientists began to perceive regular and sometimes changing radiation as a signal from aliens. And I thought, why couldn't that be true? Let's look at it in Morse code. A lot of people know it, and if they hear a signal, they'll know what it's about. But if we had never known it and never suspected that it could hide messages, we wouldn't think that there could be something hidden. To us, it would be a kind of strange and incoherent signals, just like the ones we get from pulsars. So it's quite likely that the aliens have been trying to get in touch with us for a long time, either to warn us about something or just to tell us about their location. Planet X will destroy our world. Such a loud statement literally shook the whole world at the end of the 20th century. And you'll find out further who took it from where. Although, on the other hand, why draw this out? It was a girl named Nancy, about whom almost nothing is known. She didn't attend any conferences on mystical topics, didn't have an active social life, didn't try to get involved in conflicts. In general, she was the most ordinary person who was simply impossible to notice. But then one day, she had an epiphany. She told the world that she'd been abducted by aliens about a week ago. It was dark and quiet. Suddenly, she was struck by a blinding light. It was a very powerful spotlight lowered on the girl from somewhere above. Not even a few seconds passed before she no longer felt the ground beneath her feet and was rapidly levitating towards it. It's funny, but even though the girl herself was timid, in this case, she was completely calm. Soon, she realized that she'd been transported to an alien ship. There were representatives of another race around who, at the same time, were communicating in a language she understood. They told her that they planned to use the girl as a transmitter. They sewed a special chip into her head for this purpose and let her go back home. At first, the girl couldn't sleep properly, which made her feel terrible. But as soon as she felt better, she decided to give an interview and tell people around her the whole truth. According to her, Planet X is coming towards us. It's much bigger and more powerful than Earth. Its size and mass are such that the collision with Earth will cause a large-scale cataclysm and the destruction of all life. According to the aliens, people urgently need to make a decision to evacuate, go to a new planet, and settle there. The story attracted a huge audience. A lot of people believed in it, but also a lot of people thought it was complete nonsense. And then you think, well, that makes sense. It was at the end of the 20th century, and now a quarter of the next century's passed. Nothing's happened, so everything's well. But I wouldn't jump to conclusions if I were you. First of all, it's unlikely that the aliens would have said this couple of days or even months before the collision. After all, they must realize that people were not yet at the level to move somewhere altogether, even if we ourselves saw this planet moving in our direction. Secondly, who says the government didn't take this information into account? After all, it said that it was during those years that the first active exploration of Mars as the most habitable planet began. People began to take samples from its surface to study them, and then they began to think about the possible resettlement. I believe that the government took this information as seriously as possible and began to hide the truth from people so as not to cause unnecessary panic. But whatever the case with Mars and Nancy's statement, I suggest we go back to something we've already studied much more thoroughly, the moon. They say it's actually hollow. Yeah, when I first heard that, I was pretty surprised too. The hollow moon hypothesis suggests that there's actually an empty space inside the moon like a balloon. The main reason this hypothesis is rejected by the public is because of the many studies with the help of modern technologies. They show that there's still something inside the moon, but is everything so clear here? After all, if we assume that there were trips to the moon after all, and the photos from there are authentic, it turns out that people really took pictures of strange objects. Faces sticking out of the lunar soil, secret passages, some unique buildings discovered by astronauts. And there's another version that I found on the Conspiracy Theorist Forum. One of the former professionals said that while traveling to the moon, they noticed a strange figure somewhere in the distance. 
At first, they thought it was one of them. A person was just too distant from the group. But once they turned around, they saw all the members of the expedition. The people had no doubts. They were sure that they were dealing with someone alien. Wanting to know the truth and at the same time benefit people, the scientists went to follow this figure and wandered into an underground laboratory. It was completely empty, like a giant parking garage with nothing in it at all. However, there were already aliens running around and trying to build something. That was about 10 years ago, so it was impossible to say exactly what was there at this point in time. The moon is not the only one covered in mystery. There were also mysterious finds on Mars. The first discovery is not exactly about Mars, but about the Starship rocket, which is supposed to deliver people to the red planet. Recently, Elon Musk pointed out problems with the methane and oxygen-powered Raptor engines, which ensure the flight of Starship. According to him, work on test launches is not progressing as fast as he would like, and problems with Raptor production could slow down the Starship's release. This means the Mars mission could be delayed and postponed. As for the flight, the year 2029 is only approximately marked. Earlier, Musk spoke about other deadlines. For example, several years ago, the entrepreneur said he planned to send people to Mars in 2024, but this will not happen for sure. Sending even a small group of people to Mars is an incredibly ambitious and complex project, but Elon Musk has something cooler in mind. Musk is going to move a million tons of cargo to Mars. In this regard, during the first phase of the development of the Red Planet, SpaceX rockets and spacecraft will have to travel continuously between Earth and Mars. After landing, the rocket could be refueled with Martian supplies and then sent back for the next expedition or to carry a new batch of cargo. Not only cargo, but also people total in huge numbers. According to Elon's plan, the Martian colony must be very large. We're not talking about hundreds or thousands, but a million people. That's how many volunteers and daredevils the entrepreneur plans to send to the Red Planet by 2050. For this purpose, it's planned to build a huge number of ships, which will regularly shuttle between the two planets, picking up and dropping off people. According to the businessman, life on Mars will be very tough at first. The first colonists arriving on the planet must be hardy and prepared for difficult, cramped conditions, as well as hard work. Elon believes it's likely that there will be no return to Earth from this perilous journey. The average surface temperature of Mars is negative 76 degrees Fahrenheit. The planet has no breathable atmosphere and the soil is toxic. In addition, colonists will have to live in conditions of high radiation exposure. The rocky surface of Mars is covered with extinct volcanoes, canyons, and debris, and regular collisions with meteorites pose a constant risk to any discoverers. The inhabitants of the colonies will have to spend all their time indoors or in a spacesuit, breathing recycled air like in the movie The Martian. There will be enough hardship for everyone. On the other hand, the discoverers will be able to study the planet in detail and see with their own eyes what we can now only see with the help of Mars rovers and orbiters. They've made some interesting discoveries in recent years, and it's all worth taking a look. Stay on to learn about the most unusual and important discoveries on Mars in recent years and get an even closer look at the Red Planet. Crystals NASA recently reported that the Perseverance rover discovered unusual crystals in rocks in the South Sida Ridge near the crater of Jezero. Analysis showed that the rocks formed when the crystals grew and settled in slowly cooling magma. The rocks had made contact with water several times in the past, and they're now a kind of tool that allows us to date events at Jezero. These deposits will help to better reveal the early history of Mars when it was covered by water. In addition, images taken by the rover over the last year have allowed scientists to determine that the Jezero crater is actually the bottom of an ancient body of water. Billions of years ago, this place was filled with water by a full-flowing river. Its dried-up delta has even been discovered. Organic Molecules in the Jezero crater, the rover found not only confirmations of the hypothesis of the existence of a large water body, but also organic matter. Carbon-containing molecules were hidden inside rocks and dust. We can assume that the presence of organics indicates that there was, and perhaps even now there is, life on Mars. But not everything so clear-cut. 
Although the discovery was important, it does not yet confirm that life once existed on Mars, since organics arise from non-biological processes as well. Scientists will be able to determine exactly what life was on Mars when samples of substances are delivered to Earth. Subsequently, according to scientists, these samples will be the impetus for research and the source of discoveries for years to come. Even now, scientists are focusing mainly on the search for ancient microbial life on Mars, so there are many more discoveries to come. In addition to organic matter, scientists around the world are focused on another phenomenon on Mars, volcanic activity. In general, this topic has been discussed in scientific circles for many years, but not so long ago, a team of NASA researchers discovered that thousands of volcanic super eruptions shook the red planet four billion years ago. These eruptions, described by NASA as incredibly powerful, ejected water vapor, carbon dioxide, and sulfur dioxide high into the planet's atmosphere. The discovery is important because the phenomenon probably influenced the evolution of the planet's climate and atmosphere. Geologists believe that each of these super eruptions had a significant impact on the climate, and the gas released made the atmosphere denser, blocked the sun, and cooled Mars. By the way, the eruptions on Mars were indeed colossal. After them, giant holes with a diameter of tens of kilometers remained on the surface of the planet. Similar processes took place on Earth in ancient times, but apparently on Mars, volcanoes behaved more violently. That's all, guys. What's the most motivational quote you know? Share it in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you later.